Uh, I've been working for the past three years with a whole team of people in Indonesia to build an open street map community there. Um, we've been talking about HOT, most people are probably familiar with it, but just to explain, uh, it's part of the open street map community. Uh, we apply the principles of open source and open data to humanitarian response and economic development. Our uh, work in Indonesia actually goes back to the earthquake in 2010, January, in Haiti, that uh, John also spoke to. And the reason was, it was the first time on a large scale, the OpenStreetMap community had come together to do mapping in, in this way to respond to a disaster. And then start seeing things like GPS units with OpenStreetMap on uh, urban search and rescue teams, GPSs, in operation centers at the World Bank and the Pan American Health Organization, and all sorts of people using the data showing it's useful. So fast forward to the entire other side of the world, uh, and the question was, can we map for preparedness? What if all that data had already been there and only needed to be updated with what the damage was from the event? Uh, and so in partnership with the Australian and Indonesian government, um, we started to try to answer that question. So why Indonesia specifically? Um, so John spoke about in a safe. And so this is impact modeling software. So the World Bank and both the Australian and Indonesian government through the Australia Indonesia Facility for Disaster Reduction, we're building impact modeling software. So impact modeling software takes a hazard, like an earthquake or a tsunami, a single event, and then you can combine that with either population or infrastructure information to say what would happen if this infrastructure, this population, this event happened there. The problem was they didn't have detailed enough information uh, about the exposure portion of it. So here's a screenshot of in a safe, and this is a tsunami inundation model. Well, if you don't have those buildings to say whether or not they're inundated, your model's not very good. So in March 2011, uh, myself and Jack, Jeff Hack, uh, here we are on what's known as Batik Friday in Jakarta, um, went there uh, for a week just to s talk with people and see what the interest was. And that was when we did uh, the first mapping party. And a lot of the uh, pictures from Indonesia of people mapping uh, in the Open DRI report are actually from this very first event. And the people we were working with were from an existing, what was at the time, AusAid program in Eastern Indonesia with local uh, civil society groups that were working on the idea of communi uh, community governance problems. And they were already making poverty maps to discuss resources within their communities. So the thought was, let's bring them to Jakarta and see how the mapping goes. So we left for a little bit. The decision was, we need to experiment with this open street map some more. And how do we do this outreach uh, locally and more effectively? So I get, uh, gave a presentation at the University of Indonesia and we picked up uh, Amir Hartato and Fasanti uh, as interns to help us. And they were geography students in their final year. Then we started traveling around Indonesia. Uh, in this case, this was our very first workshop in Eastern Indonesia. And we didn't really have any formal materials. We were just experimenting. And we started having a lot of workshops and trying to see how we could build a community. Uh, and, what we, and why I have so many pictures of people in this case is people are really core to the community. And that's about OpenStreetMap the world over. If you don't have people, you don't have a map. And those people we trained began training their own people. And we started uh, seeing pictures of people doing this in community centers and mosques and other facilities. And so more and more people were finding out about OpenStreetMap. But how do we scale Amir and Fa? So this was after the first year. 
Uh, we had shown that collecting OpenStreetMap data for exposure was useful, but we needed to collect a lot of data. So we started recruiting. Uh, so this is our po recruiting poster. We uh, wanted to hire six more trainers. Uh, and Amerinfa graduated school and started working for HOT full time as more than interns. And so we had almost 50 applicants for this because when we originally uh, had the internships, two people applied and we accepted two people. No one thought this open street map thing was cool. But then those people got to travel all over Indonesia, meet all these interesting people, and it was exciting. So out of those 50-odd people, we added six people to our team. And everyone in this case has a geography background. It's not, our thought process was, if we were teaching people to train OpenStreetMap and also InnoSafe, having people with a mapping background would be easier to get started. It also helps that most of them are pretty outgoing and uh, photogenic, because uh, we had to teach a lot of people. Uh, and so we began a training process, this was in September 2012, to create a training team. Uh, we also had a, a couple other uh, people join in with this, because uh, one of the things was, when you do training with people uh, with varying skill levels and computers and everything, uh, you need technical assistance. And it takes time to learn all the quirks of OpenStreetMap. Uh, so on the left is Katrina uh, Engelstead, who actually works with uh, some of the people here with the national, national parks here. So she learned about OpenStreetMap in Indonesia and now is working for the US government doing it, which is pretty cool. And then Joseph Reeves, who is an IT specialist who's been involved with OpenStreetMap for years. So they came and helped with the training as well. Uh, we split into two teams and started teaching in six provinces. And so I went with one team and Joseph went with the other because you have to be able to troubleshoot why won't Jossum start? This computer has five viruses and some crazy firewall. And that's what you face a lot in different areas depending on technical literacy. And so we started meeting people. Uh, we did an entire event in Jakarta with uh, 267 urban village leaders as well as uh, we asked them to bring someone else to help map and 70 university students. We had a total of six events. We asked them where's all of your critical infrastructure and then the students helped them enter it into OpenStreetMap. Uh, and then we also went to the entire other side of Indonesia to do training as well. Uh, this is in West Papua. So if you're familiar with Papua New Guinea, the part of Papua New Guinea, uh, the, the same island that's in Indonesia is West Papua. So very sort of, it's a large country, very far away. And uh, teaching them how to do open street map mapping, uh, primarily because of earthquake and tsunami risk. Okay, so we had a team now of 10 or 11 people, some people part-time, helping from abroad. We needed more people who could train other people. Because uh, there's now people were excited about OpenStreetMap, but they weren't sure how to get started. So these are our train the trainers. Uh, so what we did is we took people out of our training program and we get, who had done well, and we gave them a homework assignment. Uh, which was essentially to go do some mapping and then do an in a safe analysis, post it on the OpenStreetMap wiki, and send it back to us. Basically to show they had learned how to use the tools, one, and two, they were excited enough to do the homework uh, that they wanted to keep going. So we brought them to Jakarta to do specific training of trainers uh, work. And that actually had little focus on mapping. It was more about adult learners and engagement and how to teach. And some of them then went and started training other people. So Indonesia has the largest scouts population in the world. It's 50 or 60% of scouts are in Indonesia. Uh, part of the reason is it's mandatory. Uh, so, and it's the fourth, and it's the fourth most populous country in the world. But here we go. Uh, and here's one of their leaders, uh, Mir. Uh, we recently reunited the training, train the trainers uh, of Monday and Tuesday, actually of last week. 
So here he is in front of uh, the Indonesian government's brand new disaster management training center. Uh, and there was a two day workshop there. So we've been spreading this through students, scouts, government officials. Even SBY, the president of Indonesia, is familiar with OpenStreetMap and InnoSafe. You know, probably on the level that a president is familiar with anything of this detail. But he has been shown OpenStreetMap and InnoSafe analysis regarding uh, flooding in Jakarta. And we have it on film. <laughs> uh, so the next question was, does Kate ever get to go home? <laughs> I didn't really intend to move to Indonesia. Some of my friends in the audience probably know that there was never a going away party for me. I just stopped coming back to Washington, D.C., which is where I had lived for two decades previous to this. Um, and so here's Ian, who's joined us in June, as a, and he's a local, um, as our team manager. Uh, he has a master's degree in uh, uh, geospatial uh, analysis uh, from the University of Melbourne. He's worked for the Disaster Management Agency and is a great resource. Uh, and what's been awesome is he's really inspired the team as well. So he and I are the same age and have not quite the same career, but me saying, oh, you should do this, it'll be good for your career, had no effect. Ian doing it, he's like, oh, this, this makes sense, and they have gotten really, really excited. Uh, we also uh, partnered with uh, Wikimedia Indonesia. We actually share an office with them now. Uh, so just the general open data community, uh, open knowledge, uh, continuing to build those partnerships. So as I said, in building a community, uh, people, I think, is the most important. Uh, but what else did we do? We made a lot of shiny materials. Uh, if you look at a lot of the general open street map uh, information, it's not made in bright and clear communications information. Like this is our flyer. Um, it was originally in English and Indonesian. I believe it's in French now and perhaps a couple other languages. Uh, and it came out of this program. Uh, there's also Learn OSM, uh, which we had created training materials through our experimentation, traveling and teaching people OpenStreetMap in Indonesia and what we learn. But now we're sharing it with the, sh now it's shared with the world in eight languages and uh, currently I believe Croatian's being uh, added as well. We also have uh, entire uh, curriculums and training materials. So I want to teach OpenStreetMap. How long does this section take? What sort of skill level and prerequisites are required? What are my slides? And really a formal program so that you can do that. And we've been testing that over the past year and we continue to test it. Then there's the digital part of communities. Our, uh, the OpenStreetMap Indonesia Facebook group, I believe is the largest OpenStreetMap Facebook group in the world. I haven't looked but there's about 1,500 members, and it's very active. Uh, the mailing list, I don't know the last time there was an email on it. People didn't really get it. Uh, when we would give workshops to figure out how technical people were, the first question we would ask was, who has an email address? And about half the room would raise their hand. Second question, who has Facebook? Everyone raises their hand. But you need an email address to get Facebook. <laughs> so, um, we also made cool badges like this. So this says, um, we mapped a million buildings in OpenStreetMap and I contributed. So just ways people can share. Uh, we had a contest. This was quite a while ago. Uh, the Denver state of the map. Uh, we provided scholarships to seven Indonesians. So Amir and Fa, who I mentioned before, are interns as well as five other people who had won an OpenStreetMap mapping contest. Uh, the other thing we've been doing is a, a university road show. This is new this year. So we've been to 11 universities. And the idea is to tell people what OpenStreetMap is and then come back and they can sign up for a workshop. We've gotten some really cool presents from this. Like this guy, our smallest mapper at the office. So people are really, really excited. Uh, 
One of the universities we went to actually had a curriculum contest. We had never been there before, didn't know anyone there. It was a teaching university. The winning project was a curriculum to teach OpenStreetMap to high school students. We'd never spoken to these people before. They found out about OpenStreetMap through the materials we had. But, so they're uh, going to start piloting that. We've also worked with other groups. Uh, once again, this is Wikimedia Indonesia. We all went and learned how to edit uh, the Indonesian language uh, Wikipedia. There's a very, very short uh, article about a bus, uh, a bus stop that I wrote. It's about this long. Um, and then we have big events. So this was Monday, the launch of InnoSafe 2.0. Uh, where sort of the official launching of information, uh, of tools, and OpenStreetMap is a part of it, because uh, it's core to what InnoSafe does. And then, uh, a lot of technical support. Here we are supporting the Jakarta government. Uh, this is an official flood map from the floods this year in January and February. HOT helps, uh, had, HOT had someone on site uh, helping do the GIS analysis. The hope next is to train the government how to do it. And, and so here's another uh, technical uh, assistance that we've done as well. Uh, we have a lot of field papers. And out surveying with uh, disaster managers. So let's review. What can we learn from building a community there? Which I think can be applied elsewhere, but you need to change the, some details sometimes of the approach and tools. We needed people. Mobilizers and people to ignite the community. There wasn't really an OpenStreetMap community before we started going. A couple guys who um, had moved abroad would come back and edit when they were visiting their friends and family. And people would edit like Bali when they went there on vacation. It's also important to have resources. We create a ton of visual information. And all of this could be taken and translated and mixed and match. Technical assistance. So we actually go out and the government will say we want to build a contingency plan and this is usually a provincial or a district government. And so we send someone to help them. Uh, help train people in OpenStreetMap, help with technical problems. Uh, because there's many levels of OpenStreetMap use. These are people that are saying we're going to use OpenStreetMap to build a plan if a disaster strikes, this is our plan, and this is a component of it. You have to have assistance so that you can trust the data, feel confident that you've done the right thing. Um, and some of it sometimes maybe is a little hand-holding, but it's been really important for um, the, the formal work that we've been doing. And some of it is even just creating nice visuals to show them what you can do with that data that they made. Can we make this work elsewhere? Certainly. I think if you look at the way communities in North America and Europe look, they aren't any different. Uh, they don't fly around as much to meet with people in person as we do, but they also, uh, it's also a little bit different because a lot of people here were using OpenStreetMap to help them do their job. They're not being paid necessarily to map an OpenStreetMap, but they are being paid to accomplish a task and they need OpenStreetMap. And just to mention, uh, we wouldn't be able to do any of this without Australian aid. BNPB is the National Disaster Management Agency, as well as the World Bank, are, are all key partners, uh, donors, and providers of technical assistance on this. Thank you. So I'm out of time. I'm going to play a video in the background while you ask questions. Uh, it's one of our visuals that we've made for uh, Ido World made for this program, because uh, what we found is having uh, information for people to just see has been really important. So it's a video of the mapping over the past three years that's happened in OpenStreetMap, uh, focusing on a couple of the core areas that we work. Any questions? Shadra. Um, I always really love hearing about your work. Uh, uh, what I'm really fascinated by is the amount of government uh, buy-in and traction you seem to have. So I wonder, you know, with the understanding that there's probably not a perfect template for this, I wonder if you could just 
maybe talk a little bit more, give a few details about how you've begun those relationships. What what networks did you activate to even get in front of some of these people? How, how did that evolve? So there's a facility um, that's a partnership between the Indonesian and the Australian government called the Australia Indonesia Facility for Disaster Reduction. And the goal of it is to capacitate Indonesia to use science to help prepare for disasters and reduce their impact. And it's co-chaired by people, by individuals from each of those agencies. So they already had a lot of the buy-in. And Um, is there any planned strategy in place uh, right now to incorporate rural risk areas uh, into this outreach in, from an anthropological sense, uh, or is it more practical to start with census areas? So we work in both urban and rural areas. Uh, one thing that probably wasn't clear when we were initially going out to 10 districts, they were all really rural areas. Uh, they weren't major cities. Uh, we do end up working in major cities quite a bit just because of population. For example, in eastern Java, we, there was a flooding project where the longest river in Java runs through eastern Java. And it's relatively rural and houses on that ri river. Uh, so the goal is hopefully someday to have all the disaster managers in Indonesia using this. Uh, but we only focus in four provinces at the moment. John? Yeah, so I guess it would be a little bit complicated to, fig to say like what part was OpenStreetMap and the software being built as well. Because uh, um, what was I going to say? Uh, well, I can tell you what our grant is for this year. We're, we're a public charity in the US. You can go look it on our tax form later anyway. Uh, it's about uh, 300,000 US dollars. And that includes employing uh, 10 full-time Indonesian staff, doing a little bit of software development, a ton of travel. Uh, there's 14,000 islands in Indonesia, so it's not like a lot of countries where you could just drive to get to the next area. Uh, as well as uh, we're making some video training videos that'll be available online so anyone can use them. And we're responsible for all of the training for this program as well as keeping all of the curriculum up to date. So a lot of writing and reviewing as well. Um, if that helps. <laughs> ben? Uh, so this obviously works very well in Indonesia. What about 40 distant countries that have a less developed uh, community of people that have been having this kind of work? Yeah, so the one thing is there's plenty of people who don't have computers in Indonesia and the uh, income disparity between the very rich and the very poor is quite significant as well, especially if you get to rural areas. And the way we got around that is that we were working with civil society groups that were already working in those communities and had computer knowledge. I think if you were going to approach it that way, uh, we have trained people who didn't know how to use computers as part of this. Um, well, one, you need to provide them technology. And two, understand it takes much longer to do the training. And I don't think there's a reason we couldn't do that. This is the only time that Pro HOT has gotten sustained multi-year funding to work somewhere. Uh, and I think we could, I, and I think there's 
things we learned from it that in a smaller country it wouldn't cost as much, you wouldn't necessarily have as many people. Uh, but it's one of those needing of partners and donors that want to do that. And, and in most places that we've worked, people want to do a project for a month or three months. And it's very difficult in a three month period to build a sustained community. Uh, you might get the data you wanted to collect, but the data might not ever be updated again. Yeah, so we don't always hear about them, but uh, for example, in uh, so the island of Sumbawa, where we first did our training, our very first training, where we left Jakarta, uh, they worked with the local government and then the prov provincial government and signed a partnership agreement between it was private, public sector, universities, and these groups, because they wanted to be the best map province in OpenStreetMap uh, in the country. And a bit of funding came from that. So there are groups that are getting funding to do this, um, but we don't hear too much about it always. And we're finding more and more NGOs really want the training to use OpenStreetMap now. And the biggest problem we run into is how do we have time to train them? Because um, we've trained over a thousand people in OpenStreetMap, but do they live in the same place that they can be trained? Like it, it, I'll mention it again because we're on the other side of the world and it's hard to imagine how big Indonesia is, but 14,000 islands. So, and J the greater Jakarta area has 20 million people. So, it's... Uh, it's hard, it, it, we're still having a hard time keeping up with demand. Mm -hmm. uh, you briefly mentioned uh, field papers and, and having a lot of them. And I was wondering if you're referring to that uh, website and application. Yeah. And, uh, to what extent you use participatory mapping to integrate into Yeah, so I call what we do community mapping because it only sometimes is it really fully participatory in the de definition, like the academic definition of participatory mapping. Because um, usually it's more people are volunteering to collect certain things, so then a disaster uh, impact model can be made, or they have um, their own uh, reason to use it. Uh, the groups doing poverty maps are doing closer to participatory mapping with the data not in OpenStreetMap. Because what they do is they decide at the village level what it means to be poor, what it means to be rich, and they map that as a community. And they were originally doing it on hand-drawn maps, and then they were doing it uh, not in a GIS but in Corel Draw, and then we're helping them do it with GIS. Um, it was interesting in showing how people adapt technology with the case of those particular field papers, is the internet wasn't good enough to to create the amount of field papers they wanted to in that particular project. And one of the local disaster management IT guys took it and ran it locally on a server so that they could create the thousands of field papers. And that won't work in every province in Indonesia because the technical capacity for IT varies completely from department to department. But it was just interesting how they had solved the pro that problem. Uh, because no one I've worked with before had said, oh, the internet's terrible. We'll just run field papers locally. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, how have you found that, um, that humanitarian, humanitarian organizations have, um, have integrated the data that you're generating into their internal work, uh, especially as you provide additional data you know, within a one, two, three, four week period? Like how, how, how fast are they able to make that decision? It depends on the humanitarian organization. Uh, if you take it outside of the uh, context of the work, we're do work we did in Indonesia, which is very much disaster preparedness, um, we do help provide data when there are disasters as well there. Uh, and like the Indonesian government 
often that's what their base map is for their planning because it's the most detailed. Uh, the American Red Cross is around here, Dale, uh, and I know that they it's integrated very quickly into what they're what they're the maps they're using because they you need the most up to date map if you're deploying fl field teams or doing analysis. We we bear hug OSM like it's 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 just what we do. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Uh, time's up, but I'll be around all afternoon if you have any questions. Uh, thank you.